Hello, everyone. You're very welcome to today's postgraduate open day for Chelsea College of Arts, uh, specifically focusing on MA curating and collections. My name is James Carey. I work in the student recruitment marketing team. I'm going to introduce the session uh, with a few slides, giving some background and some information, and then I will pass to my colleague, Lena, if you want to say hello, Lena. Hi, and welcome. Lena is the course director and Manmeet. Hello. I mean, it's a current student on the course, and they both present later um, about the course in more detail. At the very end, we have um, a Q&A section, but please do use the functionality on your software to ask questions throughout. You can direct them to any of the three of us, um, and I will compile them all at the end and ask them to the panel on your behalf. Your microphones and your webcam are switched off automatically, so you won't be seen or heard, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and I'll just go ahead with the presentation then. So I'm just going to give you an overview of Chelsea, postgraduate community, some information on the entry requirements, fees and funding, scholarships, that kind of thing. And then I'll pass to the course team and man meet the student on the course as well. So you may well know this already, but just in case, um, Chelsea is part of U University of the Arts London, UAL. Um, and that forms, that's made up of six colleges, which is Campbellwell, Chelsea, Wimbledon, which work together, kind of as sister colleges. Um, and then you've got London College of Fashion, which has just recently in September moved to a new building in Stratford. Um, and you've got London College of Communication based in Elephant Castle and Central St. Martins based at King's Cross. So they're the six colleges that make up University of the Arts London. So looking at UAL in general, why would you consider studying at UAL? It's one of the largest specialist arts universities in Europe. And it's been number two for it's either four or five years in a row um, in the top universities list for art and design as a subject in the QS University Rankings um, League table. Um, we're also, it's worth having a look um, on our website. We're also on other league tables, for example, like um, the Green Universities League table. I think we're fifth on that. Um, so it's interesting, depending on your interest, to see where we sit within all of these areas. Uh, when you join UAL, you're part of a network of 20,000 creative students that goes from foundation right up to PhD level. Um, and if you join this particular course or any course at UAL, you get a card to access the building, which gives you access to all six colleges, uh, to the communal areas in all six, um, which means you can use the libraries, for example, the canteen, you know, you can socialize and interact with those colleges as well. Um, your specific course will have its own niche area that will be um, studio spaces, teaching spaces and so forth that will be separate um, and you won't necessarily have access to um, facilities, for example, in the other colleges. But it is nice to have that interaction with the other colleges as well, especially at postgraduate level. The other thing we mentioned here as well is the London location. Um, so Chelsea being based at uh, near Vauxhall, Pimlico, it's very central, um, uh, right next to Tate Britain. Um, so it's very connected to that central element of, you, of the London city centre. Um, our staff are specialist staff who are practising professionals in their own field. And when you join a college in UAL, you're also joining the wider university, which has that gives you that double sense of being part of a smaller course as well as the larger university. Uh, and you can also benefit from the links within industry and progression into careers as part of being, being part of UAL. Looking at Chelsea, students at Chelsea can discover their potential as artists, designers, or creatives. So there's a fine art and a design program in Chelsea, very similar to what's in, um, in Camberwell. There's also a fine art and a design uh, program in Camberwell as well. Um, in Chelsea specifically, we embrace a spirit of investigation and inventiveness. Um, and you can explore art and design in a social, cultural and political context. There's a strong studio culture where students are encouraged to engage both on-site and off-site. Um, we tend to have degree shows, end-of-year shows um, in the summer and in around this time of the year. Um, and Lena can correct me if I'm wrong here, but MA Curating Collections had theirs early in the summer, not, not this in the autumn term. Um, but there is an autumn show happening at the end of November, which you can find on our homepage. You can find the information on the homepage and it's off-site. It's just around the corner from Chelsea. So it's worth having a look. Um, Chelsea as well, the postgraduate courses that are covered here, they specialize in fine art, curation and design. They're kind of the three areas that they focus on. Um, and Chelsea has existed since about 1895 and has been on this specific site since 2005. And as I mentioned, it's next door to Tate Britain and many other cultural venues and organizations. 
Um, and just for two slides to focus on the postgraduate community, it's um, one of the things UAL does is it pays um, postgraduate students, some, some representatives from each college, to be part of the postgraduate community and lead on these various activities that I'm going to mention here. That encourages engagement from students from across different colleges to meet and interact and maybe find common interests, um, which we from feedback has been very beneficial for postgraduate students. Some of these things could be curator-led tours of major exhibitions, visits to artist studios, industry spaces. You may get involved in research activities, um, or it could be student-led skills and knowledge exchanges that take place, and as well as the general opportunity to network across the six colleges. There's a whole list here of different uh, ways to kind of follow what's happening. I'd recommend looking at the Instagram in particular. Um, and once you do join and you have a University of the Arts London email address, you get, I think it's a bi-weekly email, um, which has a lot of information around some fun activities that are happening, ways to meet, socialize and network, but also opportunities like funding, exhibitions, different things like that, that might be useful, uh, leading you further, leading you on into your career. Um, and then thinking about student services that the university provides, not necessarily course specific, but in general, um, the student services department cover disability and dyslexia. They have counselors, health advisors, and a chaplaincy service as part of, their, of what they do. Um, and we encourage people to engage with this department in advance. You can engage now before you even apply um, if you have something specific that you'd like to check, to, to check to see if we can accommodate you and how we would accommodate you. Uh, on a course. Um, and it's worth starting that conversation now. Uh, there's a very simple drop down form that you can fill in uh, on, the, on the student services pages on the UAL website, um, which will allow you to ask your questions and, and see how we can accommodate you. And doing that early is good because it means the course team can set things in place if they need to. The other thing I mentioned is RTSU, the Students' Union. They have a whole range of societies, sports uh, activities as well. If that, if you're interested in that, that's a nice way to meet students. But it's also it might be that you want to set up a particular society that you feel we don't have as well, and that is encouraged. Um, and the last thing I'd mentioned there is arts temps. We know that our students may not want to work a lot, but they might appreciate the ability to work in an ad hoc basis. So arts temps is. Um, a recruitment agency that's been set up within the university, um, which just recently has started getting work external to the university. So other creative agencies have started asking us to supply uh, designers, different things like that. Um, all the jobs are paid at minimum of London living wage. So it could be something like joining an event and helping with an event um, or something administrat administrative, or it could be quite creative and link with your actual area of study as well. So it's worth joining them. You have to be a student. So when you enroll, uh, they normally have a stand um, somewhere on site that will get your attention. Um, and they encourage people to enroll uh, on their books when you join the university. And then you can keep an eye on the vacancies website and see if any of the work is of interest to you. Looking at the course uh, entry requirements, generally we ask for a BA degree or equivalent academic qualification and evidence of an ability in your chosen subject area. Lena will go through in a bit more information the specifics of what's required. Um, it is all on the website. We're, we're giving sort of a summary here um, in these slides. Um, we do consider alternative qualifications or experience in your, cho in, um, the, in your chosen field. Um, and I've mentioned a portfolio of work there. That's incorrect. We don't ask for a portfolio of work for this particular course. We do for most others. Um, but your personal statement is key here in how you express your interest in the course. Um, and accreditation of prior learning, this is where maybe you don't quite meet all of the requirements listed there. And if you explain in your personal statement why you feel you, you meet this um, you, the requirements of this course, we can consider other experiences that you've had that might be relevant uh, in some cases. English language level, if English isn't your first language, um, this is an MA course, not a graduate diploma. So the last line there, <clears throat> the IELTS, <clears throat> excuse me, the IELTS is 6.5 with 5.5 in reading, writing, listening, speaking. Um, and we'd encourage you to check out the web pages there in particular uh, to see what other uh, qualifications we can accept. Sorry. Um, and for fees on the course, the thing I'd like to highlight here is there is an installment plan that we've put in place over the past few years, which means when you enroll, before you enroll or when you enroll, 
uh, you can pay 50% of the fees. And then depending on the duration of the course, there's a different system in place for payment after that. So it's about 30% to 20% of different dates afterwards. So that's worth looking at if you'd like to avail of that as well. Um, <clears throat> and if you have studied this with, with us before, for example, you've done an undergraduate course somewhere across UAL, you're entitled to 20% discount. This doesn't apply to short courses and the like, but there's a, there's a list of what it does apply to on the web page. But for example, if you've done an undergraduate course, that would apply. Uh, and that will give you a 20% discount on your fees. Um, and then if you're a home student or an international student, there's different scholarships available. And again, with these, you kind of need to dig into the detail, look at the criteria. Um, there's often more than one route. So you have to kind of look at that and see where you sit in this. Um, the main thing is you don't have to worry about these just yet. The main thing is get your application in for the course, um, the dates for the course and the dates for these scholarships that kind of align so that you apply, get your place, and then you can apply for the scholarship. So uh, the dates of the scholarship, the deadlines for the scholarships are much later than the deadlines for applying for the course. Um, if you're a home student, you could avail of a £7,000 fee waiver. Um, and there's 185 of those across UAL. If you're an international student, we've got 215 of those across UAL. Um, and I've listed the deadlines as well for those. There are four £50,000 scholarships for international students, which would cover your tuition fees, accommodation, in one of UAL's halls of residence, and it might uh, also contribute towards your living costs. You might also want to look into a postgraduate master's loan. Um, last year it was £12,167. Um, this is for you to spend at your discretion. This could be on the tuition fees, living costs, or combination of both. It's paid in three installments, um, and it's worth looking at the gov.uk website. There's quite a lot of detail there. You'll need a bit of time to establish, um, go through the criteria and work all of that out. Um, but if you apply for that, do remember if you have an undergraduate loan, you'll be repaying both. Uh, and obviously the, the repayment begins once you reach an earnings threshold. To help you with this, there's a fees and funding calculator on the web site under the fees web pages. Um, and that might give you an idea of the estimate the costs and so forth and help you think about what it is you, you have to think about before you apply. Um, and the last slide is just mentioning the deadlines for the course. So. We have a deadline in December and April. There's places available in both. It's not like the course is not going to fill up in December. We've deliberately sp split it like this so that you have two points in the year to apply. Um, 13th of December is the first one. And then we have another one on the 3rd of April. Um, and the in case I forget to say it, I'll mention it now. There is an opportunity to come on. So there's two opportunities to come on site and see the college, uh, get a look around Chelsea and get to know the spaces a little. One is to book onto a campus tour. And they happen every term. I think there's probably, there is one in December. I haven't checked before this, but there should be one in December that's taking place. So you could book on that. Um, and we're also going to run a postgraduate on-site open day, specifically for this course, uh, sometime in the springtime. And that will go live just before Christmas. We just need to uh, work out a date with Lena and the, the technical staff to make sure the spaces are open. Uh, so that's it for me. I'm going to hand over now to Lena. Thank you very much, James. That was really useful. Um, okay, I think I need to perhaps if you stop sharing, I can begin. Sharing. Yeah. Okay. Apologies, my dog dog has of course started barking um, at exactly this moment. This is how it goes. She will stop. Um, okay. Uh, I'm now sharing, I believe, and I'm gonna um, just turn. Uh, on the slideshow function. Yep, that's perfect. That's it. Okay, excellent. So welcome everybody and thank you for your interest in the course. My name is Lina Druverovic and I'm the course leader for MA Curating and Collections. Um, I'm showing you this uh, cover slide and I will come back to uh, why I'm showing you pictures of people not just objects. In the top row are some images of some visits that we've done recently on the course. And at the bottom is the work that was curated by uh, last year's cohort uh, that uh, we have a student uh, from, from that cohort, Manmeet, who will talk about uh, her experience. 
So I'm just showing you just to give you a sense of what what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, we go on a lot of visits. We do a lot of uh, exciting things together. I'm going to run through the core elements of what the course entails and hopefully answer some of the questions you might have in your mind. But also my aim is to really give you a bit of a sense, a, a kind of lived sense of what it's like to do this course. So I'll give some examples and talk about some things that we've been doing recently. So that's me. <laughs> uh, my name is Lina Druberovic, and I am going to tell you a little bit about my background, my own curatorial practice. You can also find more um, about my curatorial practice uh, in the link. Uh, or rather um, in the in the URL, uh, druverovic.org, which is my, my portfolio, so to speak. So I am a practicing curator and something that's important to say for UIL generally, but uh, for this course specifically also, is that we um, are all practicing, we're all practitioners. So I have an active curatorial practice, um, which is uh, very much connected with my core research areas. Uh, so I write, I curate, um, I work uh, collaboratively with many different people in many different configurations. And this is something that's very much brought onto the course and students become very actively involved in some of these projects and these activities. So I think it's very important that this is something that's really core to the way we teach. My colleague, Linton Tolbot, who is the other uh, person teaching on the course, is also a, a very active practicing curator. So my background is in contemporary art, and I have worked across the field, uh, both in the public and in the private sphere. So I've worked as a curator, for example, at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London uh, as a media arts curator. I've worked for a private foundation um, that was uh, specializing in the former East. Um, so I was artistic director there. I've curated a biennial in, uh, in the Nordic region. So a lot of my work has been very international. And in 2003, I founded an arts organization called Electra, a commissioning organization which works with contemporary artists, often in the um, situation of uh, creating new work and collaborating with arts institutions and organizations and museums. So really enabling artists to make projects happen that wouldn't perhaps otherwise happen and uh, and enabling them to do so in their own um, time and kind of taking, taking the time to really enable and develop artist projects. So this was an um, Arts Council um, MPO, meaning Arts Council National Portfolio Organization, meaning that it uh, had funding from Arts Council England. I regularly publish and participate in conferences, and I'm currently curating a, a biennial, uh, the kind of 60th um, anniversary of this uh, sort of um, significant exhibition in, in Belgrade, in Serbia. Um, and in terms of my background, educational background, I am actually an alumna of UAL. I did my foundation course at Chelsea and uh, my BA at St. Martin's and then I went on and did other degrees, um, including a PhD between uh, the Royal College of Art and Tate. So I have a kind of uh, my fingers in lots of pies and lots of experience of different educational environments. Um, and um, I've been very pleased to be able to come back to UAL. So that's a little bit about me. And I should probably say, referring to what I said at the beginning, that my practice is very much collaborative. And it, on the course, something that's really important is that we work in teams. Curating is never about um, working on your own. Curating is always collaborative, participatory, working with people, working with different teams. And that's why I show you people as well as objects. It's curating and collections. So we work with artists, but we also work with collections and archives. And it's very much about working um, together in different teams and really developing the skills that it takes to work together with other people and collaborate and form partnerships. So I'm just going to go uh, through some of the core aims of the course. Um, so really the course offers you the chance to work um, alongside, I'm just gonna move this down, to work alongside established curators, um, really learning how to handle art objects. We work across art and design. Um, you will work 
with professionals from the field. So we have a lot of guests. I'll mention this a little bit later. So we have a lot of guest curators coming and speaking um, to, to our students um, and also leading projects. Um, we're also very involved and engaged in thinking about how to be ethically responsible curators and really to think sustainably. And so what I mean by this is that through every project, we will ask questions about what does it mean in terms of questions of labor? What does it mean in terms of sustainability, both environmental, but also in terms of resources, our own time, our own labor, what we ask of other people when we work with them. Um, UAL is very actively working um, uh, with principles of climate, social and racial justice. And this is something that's very much central to the course. So I always say at the beginning that we don't, on the course, we don't have, for example, a post-colonial or a decolonial session or a feminist session. The whole course is, is built on these principles and these kind of questions. So we're constantly questioning institutional structures, any forms of systemic imbalance, violence. We're constantly questioning institutions, questioning ourselves, questioning what does it mean to be a curator. So it's very much a kind of critically engaged course. Um, secondly, your exhibition skills uh, will be developed in parallel or together uh, with uh, curatorial knowledge. I will later mention there is a, a module that runs throughout the first two terms called curatorial knowledge taught by my colleague Linton Talbot. And this is very much uh, engaging with key questions and discourses in curatorial practice. There are a lot of study visits to major institutions and also small organizations. And it's really about this combination of practical engagement with um, kind of a, a theoretical and historical understanding. So it's really about building the combination of skills you need to become a, a successful active curator. It's about really understanding the current moment and understanding how you can function as a curator today, as opposed to maybe the more kind of traditional ways in which curating might have operated 20 years ago. Um, within all this, it's important to say that from the moment when you come on the course until the moment you leave, you're asked to develop your own individual research, just like we do, just like I mentioned, I have my own research and my own research interest. So you will come to the course we'll get to this when it comes to the, the admissions part, um, with a study plan. That study plan is something that develops throughout the course. You're not held to that idea that you came to us with. That will develop, it will change, it might completely change, it might just change direction, but you're really developing and building up your portfolio through your research, through these visits, through the projects that you're doing, and you're building all of this and this is built into the assignments on the course. So um, we will we will discuss this a little bit uh, further down the line. Um, so moving on, just trying to move this slide along. So um, yeah, so the hands-on work with archives and collections is really central to the course. And this is something that's quite unique and that's perhaps something that puts this course as like uh, makes it a little bit different from many other courses, uh, many other curating courses, both in the UK and internationally, is that we really put this uh, focus on collections. So what does this mean? This means that you are not just researching online, finding out about what collection might exist at the Victoria and Albert Museum and what might be out there in different museums. We arrange visits. We have our own very rich range of collections at UAL. We have, for example, um, a collection of artist books in the in the library at Chelsea physically. Uh, there is a special collections and archives um, center at uh, one of our sites in uh, at London College of Communications, which is one of the colleges James talked about. And we have a very strong and very good relationship with them. They actually teach on the course. So from day one, you're actually handling objects. So you're learning both what it feels like to work with a collection, but you're also learning the technical and the care side of working with collections. And um, a colleague uh, teaches one session a week um, for much of the course on um, on collections, collections and curating. So this is something that's very embedded into the course. 
as is, uh, for example, a collection that we have on site physically in the curating hub where we're based. Um, so um, a collection of the Inner London Education Authority is something that's actually temporarily on loan to the course, and we're very lucky to have this. So it's a collection of, of numerous objects. I won't go into the details now, but students are asked to work with this. As well as this, we have access to collections and archives that come through our own research. So through my own research, I have, for example, brought a collection of um, documents and artifacts um, and um, and kind of a very varied uh, materials uh, about the non-aligned movement. So this is a very different type of collection and students are currently working on this. So investigating how to work with a collection that's perhaps quite politically charged, quite uh, um, difficult to work with, but they are actually the first group to be actively working with this collection that hasn't even been fully integrated into an institution. So it's very much, as I mentioned, a live project and their real outcomes in uh, organizations and spaces um, as we work on these projects. Um, so we also get exclusive access to various archives um, and and we have meetings with uh, with curators. So a couple of weeks ago, we went to the Victoria and Albert Museum um, to uh, see some um, selections of their archives, which we uh, had some time with the curator there, which was fantastic. And there are many other uh, collections and archives um, on different sites of University of the Arts. Um, what to expect, I've already said, a balanced approach. So expanding your practical hands-on skills. So alongside this very hands-on work with collections, we also have uh, professional practice sessions where we might talk about working with artists, commissioning artists. We might talk about uh, putting together a pitch or um, an arts council application, for example. We might talk about fundraising and budgets. We might talk about marketing and promotions. So there might be, there will be a series of uh, sessions woven into the project where you learn about these kind of very practical real world uh, examples of uh, of what a curator needs to do. Um, I just recently held a session on curatorial imperatives. What are curatorial imperatives? What does the curator need to think about from, um, you know, thinking about audiences and access to thinking about lighting and technology to writing essays. So this whole range. So what are all of these things the curator needs to be thinking about? Um, curatorial methods. So learning about exhibition design, concept development, marketing, et cetera. So all of these things. And of course, as I already said, we have guest curators, artists, thinkers, academics coming to speak to us. Often they will be uh, coming to us through projects that we're working on. And often we will go and work in partnerships in other organizations. Um, so the key elements of the course, or, or perhaps the key takeaways of the course are that we really learn critical thinking. So we're constantly asking questions about the contemporary moment. We're asking questions about our own situated knowledge. So who are we? What are we bringing to the course? What, what do we as curators have to say? And how do we say it? How do we make different forms of knowledge valuable and valued? And how do we communicate and collaborate with others? So these ideas of the public, dissemination of exhibition content, objects and their interpretation. So all of these things kind of would fall under critical thinking. Handling materials, I've already spoken about that. Collection visits, so engagement with museums, uh, events, exhibitions, etc., and then training um, uh, and support. So you will get. Uh, um, we we collaborate closely with Chelsea Space, which is a gallery that has its own contemporary art profile. It's an active gallery and an active space on the contemporary art landscape in London and beyond. So we have an ongoing, very strong, ongoing relationship with them but also other spaces as well and other curators as well. Um, so the course will help you prepare uh, for a career in curating and collections. So you'll work with many different curators um, and you will also understand what it takes to be a curator. So it's not like you're there, there is one model or that there is one way in which a curator becomes a professional curator. There are many ways and it's very much down to your own agency and down to your own 
um, finding your own pathway because there's so many ways to be a curator today. So you'll get hands-on experience through all of these materials. And as I already said, work on live projects through the active research of, of the tutors. The mode of study. So the, the course uh, takes uh, is, is structured over 15 months. It's full time and it runs for 45 weeks and you'll be expected to commit an average of 40 hours per week to, to the course, including teaching and also independent study. So some reading and, and obviously your own research. So it's, it is, I would say, very much a full time course. But of course, people do need to have some part time work and sometimes people have to juggle, but that's just the reality of it. Um, this is uh, just to give you a sense of how it looks in practical terms. So we have three core units, and I'm just going to very quickly run through these and how they work. So unit one is, I, I will talk about them um, in, in, in a moment, but basically it, the teaching happens in, in three blocks over four terms. So it's one academic year plus one term. Uh, the next academic year. So you're studying from uh, October, so late September, October until December um, the following year. Um, so, and here uh, there's a sort of a little bit of information about assessments. I'll say a little bit about that. So unit one, that's term one. So that's from September to about January. And that's really an introduction. So you have a lot of what I've mentioned is curatorial knowledge. So a lot of those sessions, which are seminars, discussions, readings, um, there's quite a lot of reading um, for that. And you will also work uh, with me in what we uh, have termed uh, curatorial labs. So that's a little bit like if you imagine like a science lab where you're working together, you determine shared goals, you determine what you're, you, what, what you're, what you're working towards, what you're trying to achieve. And uh, each of the labs works on a specific collection or a specific body of materials, culminating in a display um, that the, the lab works together on, including also some written texts and communications around this display, et cetera. Um, in unit two, this is where you begin to work with partners. So you're deepening your practice through engagement with collections alongside curatorial activities. So you could perhaps think of these units as you're gradually becoming more independent and shifting from being very much based at the curating hub, which is where most of our teaching takes place, to reaching out into the world, working with partners, working with different organizations, institutions that we arranged so there will be projects in collaboration with different galleries and spaces. So you're thinking about different contexts. What does it mean to do, be doing public programming? What does it mean to curate an exhibition versus to curate an event? What do different publics mean and how do you work with different publics, et cetera, et cetera, depending on the partnerships we're working with. Um, and then unit three is a final unit, which is very much independent. Um, and you will work towards an exhibition or a conference and um, self-directed study. So throughout this whole process, you're, as I said, building your portfolio. So there are a number of uh, submissions throughout the course. So you submit your portfolio at different points. You will receive a mark at each of these points, but your final mark, um, the mark that matters, so to speak, is from this final unit. And you are building your portfolio as you go along, and you are also building something that then becomes your dissertation or your final essay. So this final unit is in the autumn term of your second year, so the, the final part of the 15 months, and you work collaboratively quite independently towards either an exhibition or a conference, and you're working on your um, dissertation or your, your essay at that point. So I ju I'm just giving you a sense of a, sort of what a typical week might look like on the course. So this is very much based on how it is right now. So I'm working with the uh, uh, first year um, in term one. So on Monday, they will have curatorial knowledge. In the afternoon, they will have academic support sessions. And this is colleagues uh, from the academic uh, support team who come in and talk to students about uh, different approaches to writing, support them with writing techniques and work with them through 
uh, throughout the term to support them in submitting their final submission of, of their essays and their written work. Tuesdays, uh, you will have collection studies. So this is where a, a colleague is very much talking about things, for, uh, for example, things like um, um, how a, a collection is cataloged, uh, thinking about uh, condition reporting, these kind of things, very much object-based. And there are um, non-compulsory digital curating sessions. So this might involve video. Uh, so it's very much technology-based. So video uh, production, it could uh, have to do with Photoshop. It would could have to do with uh, After Effects, so different software, so really to enable you to op operate digitally. Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, the group is with me in these curatorial labs where we might go on a site visit, we might read a text, we might be working with the materials, do uh, in-depth readings of some materials from the collection or a deep in-depth analysis of a particular object. Um, so this very much varies, or we might have a guest. So this morning we had a guest who spoke about collectivity, working collectively, and what does it mean to be a, to, to operate collectively in art. Um, and then Fridays we have a year meeting, online or offline, and uh, individual tutorials. So everyone gets uh, tutorials throughout the, throughout their time, which are um, either one-on-one -on -one or group tutorials with your tutors, but it's very much to support your progress. Um, so as I mentioned, I won't go into much detail here, but we go to a lot of galleries, museums, art centers. This year we uh, went to Freeze Art Fair and Freeze Masters. We've just been, this is an image from the Victoria and Albert Museum visit just a couple of weeks ago. Um, lots of guest lectures and lots of collaborations. So some examples of collaborations include the Mosaic Rooms, um, Chelsea Space, uh, a gallery called Pier UK, publicly funded gallery, uh, Tate, Camden Art Center, and we are constantly developing, I'm constantly having conversations with different spaces, different curators, different colleagues about ways in which we can work together. Um, I think that probably brings us towards the end of my, what I had to say. Um, so the application process, this is something that you can very much uh, follow on the website. The important thing to say is that what really matters is your personal statement and your study plan. So your personal statement, it's important that you tell us who you are. We want to know who you are, why you chose this course, why us, why, why we are a good match for you, and what is it, what are your interests, what you've done so far, and how what you have done so far has led you to wanting to do a course in, in curating and where you see yourself going, where you see yourself progressing from here, which is something you develop more in your study plan. So the, the study plan or study proposal is really where you'll have a chance to tell us about your current practice. And even if that isn't curatorial, even if, if you're coming from a different field, that's fine. But just what you have been working on, what your ideas are, what you're thinking, what you're reading, what you're interested in, um, the kind of indication of the topics that you would like to focus on on your master's project. So what is it, you know, are you interested in a particular collection, some objects, a particular period? We have students who are interested, as I said, in art and design. Some are interested in perhaps more historical objects or kind of tracking histories of a particular discipline. Others are very interested in working with artists. Others are interested in a particular, um, say, craft or or uh, it could be many, many different uh, interests. Um, so this is where you tell us your interests. And you talk, you can talk about uh, potential methods you plan to use. So you're really imagining how your project might develop. It's important to say, this is not something that we will hold you to throughout your studies. We won't turn around and say, but you said you would do this, you must do it. This can change. This is just the beginning of our conversation. I think at this point, I've pr pretty much probably spoken more than I wanted to. And I think I've said everything I wanted to say, but I'm more than happy to take questions after um, after we hear from Man Meet, who is uh, currently very close to the end of her um, MA curating and collections. So thank you for listening and over to Man Meet. Thank you, Lena. Um, thank you, James. Um, 
that's right. Um, I think we're finishing in next week now. So it's literally the last leg. And it's a mixed feeling to be <laughs> leaving uh, the college at this moment. Um, regarding my experience, and that's why I'm here, um, these one and a half years have been very engaging. Um, Chelsea College of Art gives you and prepares you for the life ahead. Um, you choose this course only if you know you want to be a curator. We've had a very busy, as, as Lena mentioned and she's mentioned everything, uh, we've had a very busy uh, one after the other months and units. Um, in the beginning, we prepared an exhibition on Ilya collection, and that's a collection that is with UAL, and you go ahead, you get an object, you research everything about the object, and then you go in groups, and then you make an exhibition, and it's on a small level, but you understand how to work with objects, and then you go ahead and do another exhibition on, um, in the next unit. So in, in these one and a half uh, years, you are approximately making three exhibitions, wherein two are really small, and then you go ahead to make a bigger one, which is uh, the institution that you're working with, which is your, also your degree show. Um, regarding, regarding the cohort, and which is, I'm also trying to think about my questions that I had before coming here, um, and how it kind of played off when I went on. Um, even if the cohort looks big, by the end, we are all divided into the smaller sections. And as Lena said, you have to work in collectives, you have to work in groups. It just ends up being somewhere that you are working in a lot of group projects, which works in your favor. Um, and you make the exhibitions as co-curators, you make public programs as co-curators and curate all of those. Um, it's, it's great if you, know the idea of what curating is um, as it helps you to take in as much knowledge as you can. Um, it's not necessary that it's easy to take in because a lot of it is happening, but because you know, you know the pressures of the field as well. So you also understand and you take in that new knowledge in the right way. And which I feel our tutors have done through this year, as Lena mentioned, and Linton as well, the curatorial knowledge was one of our favorite, like the whole cohort really enjoyed studying um, curatorial knowledge. And that was all the new knowledge and our practices changed because of it. Having a curatorial practice before coming here to doing curatorial practice within being in Chelsea, um, it changes your perspectives, it changes the critical thinking that you need to have as a curator, um, and it helps you and it hones your skill of making a conversation. Um, I will just show you a couple of images. Um, can I share my screen here? Yeah. Um, of how it kind of worked out for me uh, through the year. So the first two units were all about working in groups uh, and working on smaller exhibitions um, and understanding the new knowledge of curatorial knowledge, understanding how to settle in amongst a cohort which was really mixed um, with, with a few sometimes language barriers, uh, how you try to overcome them as peers how you try to still work out things as peers was something that was my takeaway and working on a very international level where people are coming from different cultures and different age groups. Um, uh, so in the third unit, which was unit three, we were supposed to make a big exhibition for, um, for an institution and I was in Chelsea space. Um, we were 15, to 18 curators who build this exhibition over the span of four months. Um, and the fact that it is a course which gives you an idea how to work with collection. We start, we were asked to respond to a collection which is a part of UAL, Barbara Sawyer collection. And then we made a contemporary exhibition around it. Just showing a couple of pictures regarding that. Um, yeah. So it's a beautiful space within Chelsea and um, it is a non-commercial institution. So we had about 
eight artists and they were from different aspects. And we as students were asked to go for studio visits, get our artists on board um, with, of course, the support of tutors and their um, go ahead on that. But to be making all of that in a group was very invigorating. Um, so these are some pictures that we kind of showed. Um, this artist um, kind of worked from South Asia, India. Uh, this artist lives in UK, but um, is from Brazil. So Yelena Popova, again, a known, very known artist and works with Listen Gallery, lives in UK. Um, so we had this idea, we were to make a lot of um, our own networks, which was pushed through the year that that's how art works. And we were told how to maneuver around it. We were, we were kind of given an idea about it. So it, it's what you want to take in that matters by the end of the day. And um, so while making an exhibition, we were also uh, given uh, classes on kind of making conferences and making public programs. So with this show, we made a public program wherein we called uh, artist Gafar Taj Muhammad to make a conversation on his practice. So that was very interesting to kind of make a conversation on a very UAL level where students from a uh, different college of UAL came in, attended the talk and, um, you know, supported. Um, another thing that really happens is that you have opportunities to make more exhibitions according to your own practice, which I felt was interesting and very, very, very helpful. Um, that not necessarily happens if you don't look for it, if I can say that, but there are opportunities. Um, and I was fortunate enough uh, to make an exhibition at the Library of Chelsea College of Art. And it, it's, it was called The Library Project. And this is something that has kind of brought upon, this course has brought upon me. This is my research. That's an ongoing research. And um, Siobhan, who is the librarian, the head librarian, she um, helped me. It was a great support to kind of being able to do this kind of a show from South Asia um, on this level. And there were about eight artists um, uh, in the show and with full support and with full research. And again, making, um, again, this is from the Chelsea Special Collection, this archive, and working from collections, as Lena said, um, was that that's what we learned right in the beginning of the year and that really helped me because this research and looking at the materials looking at the present archives um, is something that helped me to understand art history and then picking it up picking up my practice and picking up my research from there is something that I put up put these two and two together of having special collections, having special archives and having contemporary art objects in the show. So that's something which I felt was very helpful and um, something that that's that's my takeaway from this course. And again, doing like a public art, um, public conference is something that's just built in me after having all the support. And I was able to make um, another uh, conference um, at uh, the Chelsea Library um, after this. So it, it has helped me in a lot of ways. Um, it's always preferable. I feel, for me, I felt it helped me to have my experience um, to do this course. And it, it just helped me a lot to to take in all the new knowledge that I'm getting in. Um, and, and that's all that I think um, helped me and my, you know, conferences and uh, conversations with all the tutors uh, was very, very engaging. Uh, it, anytime helpful and um, very creative. It, it just got my creative thinking and my practice out there and made me more um, attuned and accustomed to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manmeet. It's great to hear you talk about your experience on the course. 
really really interesting really valuable thank you and thanks to you you've been great So we move to the last part of the session where we go to the Q&A section. Um, I've just put one slide up that might be useful to people. It is the, I think it's appeared already, but just to, we'll leave it up for a moment. It is the social handle for Twitter, Facebook and Instagram for Chelsea. So Chelsea UAL, I recommend Instagram in particular because of the nature of Instagram. We tend to have a lot of quite engaging uh, content on there. Um, any questions after this, just email chelsea underscore inquiries at arts.ac.uk. Um, if it comes to my team, if we can answer it, we'll know who can and we'll, we'll get an answer for you, basically. So please do contact us if you have any questions.